I'm Yi Jian. Okay, hi everyone. And together with Peter, we'll be presenting our paper on the stepper, which is a step by step evaluation tracer for the source to JavaScript sub language that you saw earlier. So I will begin with explaining the core concepts behind the stepper, and Peter will later demonstrate them in action. Okay, as you heard from the previous talk, the SICP textbook is used for CS1 in the National University of Singapore. But instead of using Scheme, okay, we are using the source sub-language. One characteristic, as, as mentioned, right, is the emphasis of SICP on the different mental models. In particular, in the first half of the CS1 course, we focus on the substitution model, which is a simple algebraic reduction method. Okay, it is a, a purely functional reduction method. So uh, the stepper is implemented on this functional sub-language, source2, which made the stepping possible. So let us see what this, uh, the substitution model is about uh, with a simple example. So consider this source2 program, which is a valid JavaScript program, on the square function. Okay, before we start, it is important to mention that in the substitution model, there's no idea of a naming context or environment which stores the definition of names, okay? All references are resolved by directly substituting its definitions when the de declaration is made. So in the first reduction step of the substitution model, the definition of the square is first substituted into all function applications in the rest of the program. Then reduction goes on intuitively from left to right, first substituting two into the lambda function, and then substituting two times two with four, and similarly for the function call on the right. Finally, we arrive at 13. Now that we have a rough sense of how the substitution model works, let us look at a crucial detail before looking at the stepper demo. If the function's body block only has a single return statement, like here, the substitution is simple. We just need to replace the calls with the return expression. However, in source, the body of a function declaration is allowed to have multiple statements, which might contain important information that cannot be omitted. Suppose we define the square function this way, a little differently. And in this case, we cannot naively substitute the applications of square with just the return expression, which is x arrow result. This will make, this will make the uh, program, okay, an evalid evaluation, okay, making result a free variable. Therefore, to deal with this program, we introduce the idea of box at expression level and the display of the stepper. So instead of just substitute the names with the return expression, we substitute the whole body block instead. This will result in blocks at the expression level during evaluation time, okay, as opposed to only at the statement level for JavaScript. Okay, now that these blocks capture enough information, how can we abstract, extract the return value from it? So the reduction of block expression is nothing out of the ordinary. We'll look at the first statement in the block and reduce it repeatedly. Here we see that the first statement is reduced and the constant, okay, which carries the result, the value of four, is substituted to the return statement. When the first statement of a block is a return statement, the whole block will then be substituted by the return expression. In this case, it is substituted by the number four. And that's all for, the, that's all for uh, how block expressions work. Now, uh, let us have Peter to show you what this looks like in the stepper with a live demo. Uh, thank you so much, Yijian. I would now like to go, I'd like to give a very quick demonstration of the stepper in the Source Academy that was showcased a while back, which is the online learning environment used to write and run source programs. So without focusing too much on this specific program just yet, I would like to guide you through the core functionalities of the stepper first. The stepper interface can be loaded by entering a valid program in the text editor on the left, like so, selecting either source one or two, as they are the versions of source that are supported by the stepper, then switching to the stepper tab on the right and running the program. The tool provides a random access slider to move to any specific moment during the evaluation of the program. 
and also single step buttons to more readily visualize the evaluation process in a step-by-step -step manner. You may have also noticed that different parts of the program are being highlighted as you traverse through the steps of evaluation. This highlighting indicates the expression or statement that is to be reduced, aka the redex. Even numbered steps highlight the redex in red, representing the redex before reduction, whereas odd numbered steps uh, highlight the redex in green, representing the redex after reduction. For every even odd pair of steps of reduction, a brief explanation is given below that explains what type of reduction is being performed. Now returning to the program, this specific one, a function square is defined that accepts a value, internally declares a constant that is the result of multiplying said value by itself, and then returns the result. The steps through which this program is evaluated can be effectively visualized with the stepper. The stepper encounters a function declaration statement on the first step of evaluation, consequently substituting all occurrences of square with the function square. When square is called with an argument of two, the call expression is reduced to the body of the function square, where two has taken the place of the parameter x. This is an instance of an expression level block arising during runtime when a function with a body that contains multiple statements is called. The binary expression two times two is reduced to reduced, from which the result four is associated with the name result in the constant declaration. Once all occurrences of result are substituted with four, all that remains is a return statement that effectively reduces the block to whatever value is being returned, in this context, four. The same steps of evaluation occur when calling square with an argument of three, ultimately returning the value nine. The, the evaluation of the program is then run to completion with one last reduction of the binary expression four plus nine to the value 13. This example clearly demonstrates the occurrence of expression level blocks during the evaluation of programs that involve function bodies with multiple statements. Now that the core functionalities and the reduction process of the step have been covered, I would like to take a look at a more interesting example that involves explicit recursion. In this example, after reduction of the function declaration of factorial, all occurrences of the name factorial within the body of factorial itself and the call expression are substituted with the function factorial. When calling the function factorial, notice that no expression level blocks arise as it did in the previous example. If the body of a function consists of just a return statement, the stepper directly reduces a call expression to the expression that is to be returned. From here on, reduction is performed as usual. The predicate of the conditional expression reduces to false, effectively reducing the whole conditional expression to the alternative expression. Before another call to factorial, the argument four minus one is first reduced to three, from which factorial is called again. This process repeats until the function factorial accepts a value zero and terminates, ultimately collapsing all deferred operations at the end. Although this example is fairly simple, there exist other programs where a recursive call to a function can lead to hundreds, if not thousands of calls of uh, thousands of steps of evaluation. This is where the special function skipping feature comes into play. On steps where a function call occurs, a learner may click on either of the double arrow buttons to skip between function calls, simplifying the steps of reduction. This way, a learner can decide to skip over parts of evaluation they think are unnecessary to better visualize the overall behavior of a program. Now, for the last example, I would like to delve a bit deeper into the different iterations of source, specifically source two. So if you recall from the shrinking JavaScript talk, source two is different from its predecessors in that it involves, it introduces the pair and consequently the list data structures. This example involves the map function, which is a function that accepts two arguments, a unary function and a list. The function returns a new list that contains values that are the results of the function application on the values of the input list. The function declaration of map is handled similarly to previous examples. Before calling the function map, the second argument must first be evaluated to list form as per applicative order reduction. On the first iteration of map, the input unary function and list are substituted into the body of the function for each occurrence of f and xs respectively. The predicate is evaluated to false, reducing the whole conditional expression to the alternative expression. Now here to call the function pair, its arguments must first be reduced to their simplest form. This inspires a call to the head function which retrieves the head value that is one and passes it into the anonymous squaring function. The call to the anonymous squaring function is then performed normally with an argument value of one, returning one times one, which is in turn reduced to one. 
This process repeats for every value in the input list uh, until termination, collapsing all deferred pair operations at the end. Now, with these examples covered, I'd like to pass it back to Yi Jian, who will be discussing the implementation of the stepper in even greater detail. Yi Jian. Okay, thank you, Peter. So let me share with you in this section an interesting challenge when implementing the stepper. Okay, but before that, let us have a refresher about lambda calculus. In lambda calculus, there are variables such as x, y, and z, and abstractions using the lambda symbol represented in JavaScript as an arrow. You can think of a lambda function as an anonymous function. When supplied with an argument, it will return the part after the arrow substituting the parameters with the supply arguments. In this example, we have a function x arrows xz applied to y arrow y as an argument. The reduction here is called the beta reduction. The x in the body will be replaced by the argument y arrow y. And in the next beta reduction, the y in the body will be replaced by the variable z. In short, beta reduction reduces function applications by just replacing the parameters in the body by the arguments supplied. Now that we know beta reductions, we can view what we saw in the demo just now with a different lens. Let us use the same factorial example in the demo. This definition uses explicit recursion, which is seen by the factorial call in the definition. To evaluate, we first substitute the occurrences of factorial in the rest of the program, getting the top right box. After this beta reduction, we replace all the variables n by the number four, finally reaching this step. To the students, at this step, the name factorial is magically expanded into its definition again. But remember that the substitution model does not have a naming context that stores the definition. So therefore, we have actually lost the definition of factorial after the beta reduction step, resulting in a free variable factorial. This is an invalid program now. In our implementation of the stepper, we asked the question, is there a way to resolve this problem of explicit recursion without using a naming context, staying true to the spirit of substitution model? And the answer is yes. The solution to this problem is the mu term analyzed by Ariola and Klopp in their 1997 paper. And we just take the same technique for our stepper. In short, Mu terms are just lambda terms, but with a more interesting reduction rule. Let us see more in the next slide. During the reduction of mu terms, we need to do two things. Other than substituting the arguments into the body, with the, uh, sorry, like the beta reduction in lambda calculus, we also substitute the function name with the mu term itself. That way, the recursive definition is preserved for another round of recursion. Let us see how this would work in our factorial example. After going through the mu application reduction here in red, the block expression is reduced and the block is discarded. Here the ternary operator is evaluated and in the alternate, we have another mu application. But this time we know that it will preserve the definition. Finally, it will reach the result of 24 and we have an explicit recursion without a naming context. We have all the gory details about mu terms and block expressions, including their reduction and introduction rules, in case you are interested about them. You can find them in our paper. Before we end, let us look at how the stepper saves space. The main concern of implementing the stepper in a web app is that it would, the thousands of steps will take a massive amount of memory storing abstract syntax graphs in our case. So rendering the source academy application unusable. So we take an approach to maximize the sharing of syntax graphs in every step. In our implementation, for example, these four steps will share a massive amount of structures across them. For example, the function decorations are shared, the mu terms are shared, the lambda expressions are shared, as well as the least data structures. This makes the application extremely space efficient since almost all the syntax graph nodes are shared. 
To summarize, to summarize what we have seen in, in our presentation today, we have covered new features such as blocks, expressions, and mutants terms that are introduced to help build Stepper as our source of truth when it comes to the substitution model and source. Since its birth in the night, summer of 2019, we have been using it in class for the third year. I was the first implementer of the Stepper, and throughout these years, there have been batches of students, such as Peter, who implemented most of the new features, such as redex highlighting and function skipping. The Stepper is now an indispensable part for teaching CS1 in NUS, by the words of our coordinator, uh, Professor Martin Hans. Okay, if you are interested, uh, feel free to head, head over to sourceacademy.org anytime to try out the Stepper. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there questions in the room first? Yeah. Hello, this is Braxton again. Um, firstly, this is really cool. Uh oh, can they not hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, okay, we're good. Um, my my only question is: some of the intermediate steps um, in the stepper produce uh, programs that. Um, aren't valid source one or source two programs, I, th I think. Um, and I wanted to know what, what were student reactions to that? Uh, was there confusion um, at all? Okay, maybe the prof can chip in on this. Hmm. Uh, no, I want to pass it back to you guys. You are oh. the students. So, so, so uh, Peter, you, you uh, took a course and uh, we already had the stepper, right? So did, did you, were you surprised to see uh, blocks at uh, statement level, at expression level, sorry? Um, me personally, um, I don't think I really knew like the significance of the expression level blocks at the time. I thought they were treated sort of in the same way, but now that I worked on it, like as a team, I see that it's um it's a it's an implementation that is specific to the stepper, and it's yeah. So at the time, I don't think I had that big an issue with it though. Okay. Yeah, I think mainly uh the students see it, but uh I think they come to accept it that although they see it, they can't write it in their code. Yeah, that's right. So, so it helps with uh, the understanding of the evaluation rather than uh, being a syntax uh, feature available. Mm -hmm. All right. Hi, uh, my name is Will. And my question is about in the three years you've been using this, I'm just curious what kinds of insights or mental models or cleared up misconceptions do you think have been most driven by the use of the stepper? Like what are the specific things that students, you know, come out after having stepped through an expression with a tool and been like, ah, oh, that's clear to me now. Yeah, I, I think I can answer this. Uh, SICP isn't going to the uh, extreme details in the uh, in the substitution model. Their, their focus is on uh, function application and function, uh, basically function application as the core of the substitution model. Uh, whereas we take it all the way to uh, the micro steps. So conditional expressions, uh, uh, arithmetic expressions, they're all uh, uh, now explained uh, within the same model. And I think that helps the students. They not they see this not just as a conceptual tool to understand function application. They see it as a way to uh, visualize what happens when these functional programs run uh, from the beginning to the end, from the actual program that they enter in their, in their IDE all the way to the final result of the program. It's all a complete... Uh, step-by-step -step process for them. And I think that's the, uh, the added value over uh, SICP and over other, um, over other functional programming first approaches. Hi, can, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, my name's Logan. Uh, this is a wonderful talk, thank you. Um, I had a quick question, particularly because the, the granularity of the visualization is something I found really fascinating. Um, 
when you're calling a function as a part, like during the um, expansion of the evaluation, it doesn't seem to show the part where it like substitutes the formal parameter with the, the value. And I was curious um, why that decision was made uh, to not to omit that step. To substitute the formal parameters with the values. That's what is happening in the, um, in the stepper. Um, I, I don't think, or maybe I can uh, say a few words on that. I think uh, it, was, it was hidden in one of the steps to the students. So um, they will only see that the definition of the function is uh, substituted into the name. And then um, in the next step, they will already see the, um, the arguments being passed into the body of the function. So I think it was a um, con conscious decision to hide, hide these details yeah. to, um, to keep it clear because the students will already know that all oh, this function is actually related to the function that I have defined before. So we just show them the substituted result instead. Okay. Because otherwise it will cut up the, yeah. So it's like a kind of a design decision. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. One more question, then we'll have to let our last talk in the session get up. Uh, maybe I'll have you start doing your screen sharing and all that while the question is going. Hi, uh, my name is Slim. Thank you so much. This was like really, really excellent work. Um, one thing I'm curious about is in practice, uh, what, how complex of a pro or large of a program can students typically write before the stepper becomes essentially intractable to comprehend the output of at its like densest um, stage, whether that's just like the sheer number of, you know, paired delimiters piling up at the end or like lots of expressions and they can't really keep track of, of where's what. Um, and then I guess a, a corollary to that question, since I'm restricted to one nominal question, uh, is um, the, I guess, uh, have you experienced, kind of like what Logan just asked, have you experimented with different settings that will abstract over uh, individual like small steps, um, more or less? So for instance, you might show alpha uh, conversion explicitly in one version, and then another might show function application just like from you know, the FX form, and then by the end, it's just reduced to whatever the body with the substitution and, and stuff looks like. So I guess, have you experimented with like different configurable levels of, of black boxness? Yeah, the alpha conversion is very rare in our case. We don't, we usually don't need to do any uh, renaming. Uh, 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 then uh, regarding the granularity, uh, the um, uh, uh, a big step, uh, the big steps that Peter showed uh, is our only uh, tool at the moment to go in larger steps. So we can go on the function level if you, you go to the next call of the same function. Uh, but you're right, we would, uh, to analyze larger programs, we would need to um, I take this idea further and uh, see, see maybe, um, uh, but, but, to be, but you, you're very right in saying that the, uh, the, the, the whole approach becomes uh, quite practically intractable when you, uh, when you deal with uh, really uh, complex programs. So, so I think the value lies uh, the value of the step lies in the formation of this mental model rather than the actual analysis of uh, complex programs. Um, and there we do have an, another gap. So what do students do uh, to debug uh, uh, funct purely functional programs? Um, in the in SSCP, I, it doesn't, SSCP doesn't have an answer to that. We would need to uh, wait until later uh, mental models to uh, find to have better debugging tools. At the moment, we're sort of stuck with that micro level lambda calculus style reduction. No, no real answer to this at the moment. All right, thank you very much.